Yes, yes. Welcome to another edition of uh, Conversation of the Heart. It is your boy T Tail. Man, episode four. Let's get serious with Serious Voice. Uh, looking forward to speaking to her about various topics. You can absolutely catch this recap. You can catch this recap on Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio.com, um, anywhere where you have uh, podcasts available, Spotify. Um, Apple Podcasts, we're here, so we have Serious Voice here. Let's just tap in. What's up? Serious. Serious Voice, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, without further ado, uh, I could say uh, a, a legend in the making. <laughs> serious voice, legend Thank in the making, you. man. Um, you know, so for for my viewers who who don't know you, um, I had to get a tally. I have to look at it because it's so much. Um, executive producer, host, host, journalist, recording artist, entrepreneur, minister, mother, man. Um, you wear a lot of hats. So first of all, I just want to say thank you and welcome. Um. And thank you for doing my show. I definitely appreciate it. Um, it's been a long time coming. Um, yeah. I, know, I know that you're busy doing a lot of different things. Um, so for you to make time out um, to, to do this here with me, um, I definitely appreciate it. A hundred percent. Thank you. Um, so um, let's so uh, let's get started. So serious voice. Now I know a lot of people know a lot about you as far as you know C C H H and things like that. Um, the artist. Uh, the host, but let's talk about a little bit of your. Can you hear me? I think I might have lost her. Seriously, there. Might have lost Siri's voice. All right. All right, she'll come right back. Oh, man. So thank you for tuning in. So we're going to be talking to Sirius Voice about uh, various different topics um, as soon as, as, soon as she get, gets back on it and tests back in. Um, so we're going to be talking about uh, women in journalism, her journey through CHH, um, just building a brand. Uh, I think yeah, there she is right there. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we get it back. Shout out to Ryder His Wrongs, my, my, my brother. Appreciate you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yeah. I, 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 got, I got like 50 people sending me up. My phone is going nuts. So <laughs> it just, it just blanked right. out. I apologize. Yeah. No, it's not. It's, it's all good. So it's like I was saying, I think pe people know you a lot for, you know, you know like, like the artist, the host, pe you know, but I want to kind of take a walk through journalism. Okay. You know, um, at first, and then we're gonna then we're gonna get there. But you know, just your journey through journalism. How did you get your start? I um well, first of all, I went to school and I studied journalism. Um, mm -hmm. so I studied journalism at Brooklyn College. Shout out to uh, the Brooklyn uh, Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. um, studied there, and then you know, I took a number of internships at NBC, um, right. at CBS, where I eventually got hired. Um, and then I applied for grad school at Columbia's uh, School of Journalism, and I went to journalism school uh, for two and a half years and studied um, and then worked at CBS Radio. And from there, I moved on to working at weekly newspapers because I felt like I really needed to get the experience in writing and all of that. Um, mm -hmm. Initially, I wanted to do broadcast journalism, uh, but that's not the way, you know, things happened. So right. I actually started, went to school for TV and radio, and then started a newspaper, working at a bunch of weekly newspapers in the city, and then eventually uh, landing at the New York Post, where I worked for over 17 years. Um, and here we are today, hosting a TV show. So yeah, my journey has been quite, mm -hmm. quite interesting, because, you know, when I first started, um, at the New York Post, I would get sent out and all the TV reporters that you'd see on camera, I'd be around them 
trying to get quotes from people to write a story um, and to then feedback to my editor. So I've been there, done that, traveled all over the country, you know, running around, trying to get quotes, mm. get stories, um, all mm -hmm. of that stuff. I've traveled internationally. Uh, for the Carib News, when I first started, I worked for them. So we did the International Business Conference every year where we'd go to mm -hmm. a different Caribbean country and I'd have to interview prime ministers, um, you know, prime minister of Grenada, of Jamaica, of all the Caribbean countries. So that's where I kind of got my feet wet. Mm. And from there, you know, uh, working at the mainstream paper and then eventually here we are for full circle working in television. So, wow. Mm -hmm. And and that's success stories with Serious Voice. Please check that out. First of all, uh, uh, tell people where they can watch uh, success stories with Serious Voice. Well, right now we're broadcasting in Buffalo, New York, uh, Spectrum mm -hmm. TV channel um, 1302. And mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks, uh, hopefully, maybe two or three weeks, we're going to be starting in Brooklyn on Brick TV. Um, I think I did see one of the producers on, uh, Mr. L. And um, he's the Shout director of photography. L. And mm -hmm. so we're going to be, we're already broadcasting every Monday and Wednesday night at 730 in the Buffalo metro area. And that's over 100,000 homes. And starting in a, in a couple of weeks, it's going to be here in Brooklyn, New York. And then, of course, Manhattan. And then we have Vegas following in a few other um, parts of the country. But I'm yeah. excited because um, we just got back from Atlanta. We did a whole a whole slew of interviews in Atlanta um, nope. but we're not we're not gonna let the cat out of the bag just yet. We have a lot going on. Um, uh, I, I, it's, it's I, I can't get the exclusive. I can't get the exclusive. All right, cool. All right, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> um, dope. Um, so I kind of want to also now, like you, you, you've done a lot in, in journalism and things like that, and but now I want to talk a little bit about CHH. Um, okay. you know, I'll be honest when it comes to, to CHH. Um, before you. And Mr. C, you know, to be honest with you, I really didn't follow it. I keep it, I keep it a buck. I keep it a hundred with you. I didn't okay. follow it. I love hip hop. You know, I love all. I love the sport. You know, of of battle rap. I, I love all that. I grew up on that. You know how you from Brooklyn. You already know what it is, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so when you guys were doing your thing, I was like, oh, like what they're doing is dope. But like, I never really paid attention to like the actual, the, like the art of CHH for real until right. you guys had an event. I think it was in Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Brooklyn, um, where you guys had a bunch of artists come on. Oh, like, you talked about my album release for Shofar. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I forget which one. I keep forgetting which, Queens which event you had. Queens. Queens. Okay, yeah. See, I, I can't keep up with the events. There's too many events that you guys have. So it was in Queens. Shout, shout out to Queens. Um, and, um, yo, you guys had a bunch of artists. And... And I sat there and I was like, yo, these dudes is dead nice. Like, mm -hmm. and some of the women was dead nice that came mm -hmm. on. The main women that was dead nice spitting, spitting bars. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I was like, yo, like, this is CHH. Like, I mean, respectfully, I didn't grow up, like, I didn't grow up on CHH. I didn't, like, for me, gospel was just gospel music. You know what I'm saying? Right. I grew up on, like, the, I grew up on, like, the Mighty Clouds of Joy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I grew up on, right? right. Um, and the regular, you know, and, like, the, the regular music, but you know, so when people always say Christian hip hop, I never really gave it like a shot. I was just like, oh, okay, like Christian hip hop, all right, they're doing a new thing, cool. Mm -hmm. But that was the day that I was like, oh, it's it's a serious, it's it's a serious thing out here. Like they got it's real spitters out here, man. Um, <laughs> so like for real. Um, so shout out to y'all for for um for driving that lane and and, and then giving a the platform for other artists too. So salute to you guys, you and Mr. C for doing that. Um. But let's get take it back. So, so, how did you go the route of let, uh, CHH versus regular hip hop, right? Especially being from Brooklyn, like you already know whether it's in Brooklyn, Queens, right, Brooklyn, right, right. you know, like so. So, what made you go in that lane um, versus you know instead of just saying yo, I'm about to just go real hip hip hop and and go in, in this lane and kill them, you know? So, so what, what like what made you go in that in that lane? Well, to be honest, um, I kind of, I started to write rap music because I needed a way to vent. It was my way of venting. You know, some people do it because, because it's a competitive thing. They're trying to show up their friends. Um, mm -hmm. But I did it 
you know, as therapy initially. And then when I became a Christian, I said, you know what? I can't just be rapping about foolishness anymore. I want to mm. rap about something that can um, empower other people, you know, inspire mm. them in some way and point them to Christ because that's what Christianity and ministry is about. So mm -hmm. when I did become a Christian, the music automatically, it just, it was just a given for me to um, start rapping about positive stuff, inspirational stuff. And mm. it's, it's funny because even to this day, this very day uh, of February 2nd, 2021, I, I'm at this weird place where I've done gospel hip hop, but sometimes when I write, I don't write in that vein. I write what I feel, you know what I'm saying? But right. I, I, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying John 316 or using right. uh, biblical verses, but the spirit behind the song is there. So mm -hmm. even like, even when I wrote, when I wrote a gotta go, which is a fun summer song, you know, party mm -hmm. type of song, you still feel the spirit behind that. Um, and it's pretty cool. But for me, it was venting for me, it was venting. Mm -hmm. And then as I grew in, in, in Christ Christendom, um, I started to pray about my music and ask God to really use it to touch people in different ways. And that's why on Shofar, the album came out the way it came out. Because every song is about dealing with a different adversity and how you battle it, which is taking it mm -hmm. to God. So that that mm -hmm. that was the whole gist of 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 it all. And now mm -hmm. I think I've kind of evolved where you know I I kind of pick and choose. It depends on what kind of vibe I'm on. Mm -hmm. um, as of late, I've been on this social justice vibe. So as I, you know, <laughs> I, I was about to go there. I was about to go there because um, we gonna go there. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, you know, that's why we released um, Black Woman and we released mm -hmm. SOS because I can't live in America in 2021, um, you know, and we're going through all these things and not write about it. So I write mm -hmm. about what, what impacts me, what impacts those that look like me and are around me. Mm -hmm. So with that, you know, Black Woman uh, was an amazing song. And I think it, not, and not that it was before its time, but... Um, it kind of, you know, like when I look back on, on when you released it to where we are now, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's right on the money, right? right. And, um, and it's interesting because like when, you, when it comes to Christianity and the, and the church and, and things like that, um, sometimes it's like, oh, maybe you shouldn't write songs or sing songs about that because it's all about, because people say, oh, well, why do you always see color? Why is it always color? Like, you know, with certain things and, you know, you know, God doesn't see color, you know, and, and, and you hear all these things, right? Um, so why did you decide to really write that song, Black Woman? And the second part to that question is, were, were you afraid of, of the backlash that, that could have came from it? It's not that I didn't get backlash from it. It's just that I didn't, I didn't right. publicize the backlash. Um, mm -hmm. I initially wrote it because I had an encounter. Um, you know, I've worked for, I've worked for a lot of major companies and this one particular day I was dressed up in a suit. I wasn't looking like a rapper. I was looking like a businesswoman, had my mm -hmm. makeup here, everything done. I had on a suit. I'm in an elevator with a Caucasian gentleman. He turns around and looks at me and says, well, what do you do here? But the way he said it was with <laughs> such disdain and like, right. you could not possibly be doing anything important in this building. And mm. instead of me reacting, you know, the way mm. most people should, I said, the you know what, way. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> and um, I handled my business, then got home that evening and I started to write. Mm. And that's, that's why you guys got Black Woman. The way, it, the way it came out was my frustration and anger and all the emotions, I put it on the song. So you heard it. Like I didn't, I didn't um, give. I, there was no build up. The build up was right there from the beginning of the song. You know, right. when I say based off my black skin, I should wake up round ten. You know, like mm -hmm. I was just going in from the jump. Um, jump. And 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 it's just there's a lot. When I released the song, a lot of black women, a lot of brown women inboxed me, DM'd me privately, and said, "Thank you for releasing this because I've been through this." And somebody mm. needed to address it. And here we are today with everything that's happened. And mm. now the tables have, have literally flipped around. And you have people like Stacey Abrams. You have so many other black women that have taken on a different role. 
And 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 I gotta say, the hook says, "Bet you think I'm just another black woman," and that's mm -hmm. the anthem for these women. They're more yeah. than just another black woman. Mm -hmm. they're, they're they're powerful, you know. They're they're um you know people who have a seat at the table who are making moves. You know, even in New York City now, I, I just watched the news. They're appointing a black woman as the head of the police, which is insane. So it's like, <laughs> hey, I never I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> right. um, to, to be a, and shout out to Stacey Abrams my goodness um, speaking of, of a powerhouse shout out to Stacey Abrams man with that Nobel Peace Prize um, yes. she's nominated for that um, yes. that's big that's big moves um, and shout out to you and for all those who haven't heard Black Woman please please go check that out and take a listen to it man it is absolutely an amazing record um, and it's so timely right now in the time that uh, we're living in so I've known you for a while um, and you're, you guys have evolved, like you have evolved a lot since I've known you as far as just, you know, where you guys, where you started to where you are now. Like it's, mm -hmm. it is amazing. So can you speak a little bit about building a brand and not only building it, but the importance of always reinventing your brand? Cause I think you do it really well. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, You've seen so many different facets of me. You've seen me as a mother. You've seen me as yeah. a minister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've seen me as a rapper. So you can speak on so many different things. I think that um, the number one key is surrounding yourself with ambitious people. Mm. Um, you know, I surround myself with folks from More Beats, um, which is a distribution production company, uh, a record label. Uh, Mr. L runs More Beats. I believe he's on here. Mm -hmm. I surround myself mm -hmm. with, with, with very, very ambitious people, professional people, people who mm -hmm. know how to get things done. And I think that if you're ambitious and you want to grow, you want to evolve, um, and you want to be able to get bigger opportunities, if you will, and you want to become a success story, you have mm. to. That's that's the number one thing. The people around you um, will determine your altitude and obviously your attitude, because I hear that so often. Um, but in terms of the branding, I think that I've learned from a lot of people um, in TV and radio and media period that it's a constant reinvention. Every year you've got to reinvent because people, we all have ADD. And if I if I do a if I do a press release today, two weeks from now everybody forgets the press release. If I do a photo shoot, you forget what I look like. Um, so you have to constantly keep putting pictures, images of yourself. And this is the other thing: when you understand uh, marketing and branding, you understand that people don't want to read a book on social media. What they do want to do is watch a video. Um, that's engaging. They want to look at beautiful pictures, pictures of you looking your best. And those are the those are the images that will get the most reaction, the most engagement. So I've implemented that consistently. So every <laughs> year, every year I'm getting I'm getting two, three, four photo shoots, you know, every season, every um Every quarter, it's a new photo shoot. You've got to keep doing videos, whether it be just a social media video. Um or a full length video, but you've got to consistently do these things. Just like when I'm a rapper, I know that in order for me to, to, to be the best rapper that I can possibly be, I've got to be consistently releasing music because then people will be reminded that serious voice can spit. She has bars. So I'm constantly, you know, recording, um, maybe not as often as I should because now we have success stories, but a lot of people don't know behind the scenes. I'm still recording. I'm still writing. So at any moment, it could be tomorrow. I could just drop an EP, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, that's a part of it. Just staying on top of the images and always refreshing those images. That's, that's a major part of the branding. And as you grow older, because obviously the person you knew 10 years ago is not this person that's on here right now talking to you. So I've evolved. I've matured. I'm a grown woman. I'm not going to um, do, you know, something that a 20 year old is going to be doing because I'm a grown woman and I have a husband, I have a child, we have businesses, we have things that we're doing. And so, mm -hmm. um, with that, with, with growth in age and growth in ministry, your brand has to reflect that it has to mirror mm -hmm. each other. And so that's mm -hmm. why I think the images have changed a great deal. Um, but still we're having fun with it. It, it shows, um, and you've been doing an, an amazing job just with your transformation and just wearing different hats. Um, 
you know, I've seen you go from, you know, it's like the rapper to the minister to the mother, you know what I'm saying? Um, to, 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 to the choir director, you know, all those things, right? Like, so, which is a perfect trans transition to, to kind of my next, to my next question, because balancing mm -hmm. career, multiple careers and, and family, and, you know, a lot of people have problems with this. You know, a lot of people have one career and, and they can't balance, a, you know, a family. They, they can't balance that with the spouse or, or with kids. They have a problem with that. And you wear multiple hats. It's like a mother, you're recording, you're writing, you're hosting, you know, like you're doing a lot of different things. I'm sure that, you know, that you're, you're executive producing. Like, so you're doing a lot of just, just different things. And yet you're a full-time mother. You know, let's not get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? You're a full time mother. You're not part time. Yes, yes. So I don't want people. I, I want people, people to think, oh, it's part time, and and you know, your husband does it. No, y'all, yeah, 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 you both are full time parents, right? But yeah. how do you manage that to have time one for your spouse? That's a real thing, you know, because some people just say, oh, I make time for my kids and work, and then my spouse is or whatever, right? But it's like, no, like you make time for your spouse, you make time for your children. Mm -hmm. and multiple crafts that you have. And I think it's very important that you, that you, that you can speak to just how you do it, what's the process of, of behind it, and, 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 so, and so forth. Um, you know what's crazy? One of the things that I've been trying to do consistently um, over the past few years is I try to be as domesticated as possible. Now, this seems kind of mundane, um, mm -hmm. But a lot of women who are who wear many hats tend to mm -hmm. slack off on the cooking at home, on certain things, you know, spending time with your child, spending yeah. time with, with your, your spouse. And I still make breakfast. I'll still make pancakes. Um, you know, I make time for all these, these things. So I might do like a 10-hour session editing video or whatever or have a shoot, but even if it's midnight, I'll make breakfast at midnight so we can have a meal together. And having a meal together is very important. Sitting down and chatting and, and asking the 12 year old, hey, what did you do today in school? You know, what did you learn? Or even just talking about funny stuff that happened on TV um, mm -hmm. or talking about a movie, it helps. And consistently that helps me to sort of, you know, balance everything out. We also, um, we, we ride together. We went to Atlanta, the whole family came. You know, we do mm -hmm. everything together. You know, when we're shooting uh, success stories, the little guy is there. My husband mm -hmm. is involved. Everybody's involved. It's a family affair. Like there's, there's, there's rarely a moment where I'm getting on a plane. Well, back in the days when I first started, I'd get on a plane and go to like Dallas by myself. But these days we try to do it together. So we incorporate that uh, where we mm -hmm. can, we can do business together and family time together. Mm. So what would so let's just say you know if there's a husband or or wife who's struggling in this particular area, right? That said, man, I I just can't find the time. You know, there's not there's there's so many there's not a lot of hours in a day. You know, um, to really focus on you know my, you know maybe my spouse or my child. Um, it's they're very career centered. Like like, what advice would you give to this particular person? Wow. Um, I think that having a conversation with your spouse is very important. Because here's the yeah. other thing. When I when I first met Chris, um, and we tell the story all the time, the first the first main question I asked him was, Are you into Christian rap? Because I knew that I couldn't be married to someone um and have a life with someone who wasn't into music because that's my that's my heartbeat. That's you know, I wake up and I'm thinking about music. Mm -hmm. So um it's, it's a huge um, aspect of my life. And once we realized we had that in common, it was a go. Um, oh, my goodness. I apologize. People are trying to call me while we're on here. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. Um, mm -hmm. So what we do is we we have that in common we've recognized it and he has a role that he also plays in everything that i do mm. um but if if you're if you're with someone who's super busy and they can't find time why not you find the time for them so it's it's not always you know it's not always where he's finding time to be with me and what i'm doing mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. i compromise and i find time to be with him and what he's doing 
because now he's getting more involved in DJing. He's getting more involved in, you know, things, things that the DJs engage in. So mm -hmm. I, I try to take time out and sort of encourage him in that area. It's not a one way street. It has to be a two way street. And, and that's what makes a relationship work when it's mm. a two way street, because if one person is always giving and supporting and supporting the other person who's doing the giving tends to, after a while, feel like, okay, well, am I going to get some love back? You know, we're not, we're not just talking about intimacy. We're talking about physically yeah. being there, showing that you, you give a damn about the person and their right. interest. So mm -hmm. we have to show that we care about our spouses or significant others' interests as well. Mm. I think Mr. L said 30 minutes a day until you get to 60 minutes a day, then add time accordingly. Okay. Okay. He's he's an expert. <laughs> he's, he, he's you know you know he's been married for a long time and so have we you know so mm -hmm. I I try to make sure that I'm cooking breakfast I'm cooking dinner I don't do it all the time but right. I do a lot of cooking um, now that we're home and we're working from home I do a lot of people wouldn't even believe I do a lot of cooking um, breakfast lunch dinner etc some days I'm like whoa what is going on here. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's 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 for the betterment of your family. Mm -hmm. And you work full time, too, I think. Right. Right. Yeah. Saying. Right. And that's the thing. Like you work a regular corporate full time job and then you have all and then you wear all of these other hats. So I think the moral of the story is if serious voice can do it, then you're uh -huh. then you can do it, too. <laughs> I was going to slip. Yeah. Then you then you can do it, too. Um, so I kind of want to switch, switch, switch gears here to something I think a little bit more. A little more serious. So, okay. you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot going on with, the, with, with mental health, you know, especially um, in the black community, right? And the, the World Health Organization kind of defines mental health as pretty much being able to, you know, have the mental capacity to, to do things on a normal basis, right? And to perform fun like everyday functions normally without having to worry and things like that. That's almost like the, the specific definition of what they feel uh, mental health is and being able to go to work and come home and do normal things, right? But I always said, like, when I, like, when I saw that, that doesn't apply to Black people Be because a lot of Black people, we kind of start off born. A lot of us are born in the red when it comes to mental health because of our parents mm -hmm. and because of, of the, the different circumstances that, that we have to go through. Mm -hmm. And it's different for, you know, let's just say for somebody like me who, who might say, man, um, I have to worry about getting home safely, you know, every single day, right? When I'm driving home, I got to make sure that I'm getting home safely. For somebody else that doesn't look like me, they don't have to worry about those things. They're just going to go home. And mm -hmm. so mental health is, is, looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. And coming from a Christian, um, you know, background and things like that. And when it comes to the church, my personal always opinion was there's always been a stigma with 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 mental health in the church. And it's like it doesn't exist sometimes. It's, it's like, well, if you're having this type of a problem, then you're not praying hard enough or. You know, like, you're not going to the throne enough. You're not praying hard enough. You, uh, uh, you, you're not talking to the pastor long enough. Like, you just, it's just that. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of just want to kind of get your opinion about the mental health, especially in the church and what people in the church are going through. Because it's, it's the people that's supporting the church, going to the church, putting, you know, tithes and offering in the church, keep, keeping that church, certain church afloat, that are going through a lot of mental health barriers but aren't really being acknowledged in the way that, that they should to me. Right. Um, and then it's like, well, pray harder. And it's like, well, is that always the, is that always the so, so solution or is there more to it? Right. Um, be, because if you have a broken, if you have a broken foot, I, mean, I can't tell you to pray harder. You gonna, you gonna go to the doctor and get that thing taken care of. Right. right. I think, right. 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 So, I, but when it comes to mental health, I feel like it's completely different. Um, and maybe you have a different experience, and that's kind of why I kind of want to talk to you because you're a minister, you've been in the churches, you know, I've been in the churches, but like, what is your experience with that? I got to say that, um, first of all, my, my opinion on it is that there is a time to pray and there's a time to be proactive. And you have to, you have to get to a doctor if something is broken. And therapists are very, very important, especially for the black community and the brown community. And um, I know a lot of people who've done a lot of erratic things in their life and they had a mental 
health issue and they were sort of like put in this box like oh that person's crazy they have they have a um a substance abuse problem or they have a liquor problem and okay so then they stop drinking but they still have the issue um and so yes it's great to pray but we also need to deal with mental health and if you have an issue with that you need to go see a therapist you need to see someone that specializes in that i have mm -hmm. i've personally dealt with individuals who've you know, had to deal with schizophrenia and deal with all kinds of, you know, mm -hmm. um, things mentally. And yeah, we've prayed. We've prayed the house down. And it got to a point where it's like, you know what? I can't keep draining myself um, spiritually to, to transform you when we prayed, but now you also need to go talk to a doctor. And a lot of people within the community, um, you know, they feel like it's all about being the perfect Christian and well, you're not Christian enough. You know, you haven't, you haven't mm -hmm. prayed long enough. You haven't fasted long enough or you haven't given a big enough offering in order yeah. for everything to be all right. But the reality of it is that it's, it's a twofold, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to actually do something about it. And, and a lot of times we need to go and find a professional that can help us. Yes, prayer mm. is great, but we also need to do something about it. Um, and my, yeah, my experience is I have so many people that I know that are dealing with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their family members have just ostracized them and don't want to. And, and again, they think, oh, well, you're a Christian. Why are you going through that? You must not be a Christian. You must be a heathen then. You must be an undercover, you know, backslider, all this stuff. But it has Yo. nothing to do with that. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. And, and even when we look at our favorite celebrities, you know, the ones we like to go to the movies to see and the ones that are on social media, they do a lot of crazy. And you're like, what is going on with this person? They have mm -hmm. a mental health issue that they, they refuse to address because in our community, it's not okay. It's, it's not okay. Mm. And I'm glad you said that because... I think it's a hundred percent true. You know, I, I've spoken to many different people who have been kind of ashamed or, or, or ashamed to, mm -hmm. to go to therapy. Um, especially when you talk about men too, you know, um, it's just like, nah, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's not macho. It's not manly. It's, and then you have the Christian piece to it where it's, it's just, you're shamed because it's like, well, if I say this out loud, you know, in front of my, my church members, they might think that I am crazy or they might think right. that I don't pray hard enough. Right. Or they might not, you know, they're, they're going to go to the pastor, somebody, the bishop or something that, you know, and and so then you kind of just go back into your shell and then it creates this type of isolation. Now you feel like you're alone. Mm -hmm. You could be in a congregation full of people screaming hallelujah, but in your mind, you feel completely just just by yourself. And that's something to me that's that's problematic that we have to kind of reach, like reach our people that's in our own community and that's in our own churches that are going through these things that are getting, you know, they're getting the prayer and they're going to the services and they're getting excited and which is great, mm -hmm. but they're going home and they're still dealing with these really, these yes. really big problems of depression, yes. anxiety. Yes. And, they, and it's not always that you have to be put on medication. That's not what therapy is. First of all, you know what I'm saying? Therapy isn't always, I'm going to put you on medication. That's actually not farthest thing from the truth. That's if you have a separate, different type of a problem. Right, 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 but, right, right. But, but sometimes people don't have anybody to talk to. Like, they can't pick up the phone to call somebody because they, uh, they're going to be judged. So if they sit with themselves, they, uh, they go home at night, especially now with COVID, people living by themselves, they go home at night and they just kind of just sit there and, and, and just dwell and sink further and further into yeah. the, their into their own depression. And it's a blessing when you could pick up the phone and call somebody and maybe talk to them or a friend or somebody that you, that can counsel you or, or, or push you in the right direction to go get therapy. But a lot of people don't have that, you know, um, because they feel too ashamed. So I'm glad that I'm glad that you said that because um I think it's definitely important for our community and it's definitely important for the church to acknowledge yeah. these technology yeah. things. It's not just going to a medical pro professional. You can go to a physical fitness expert right a trainer and it's no problem but right. as soon as you say man i'm depressed and it's like all right well you gotta you gotta pray about it or you gotta or you're not doing enough and then right. that and when somebody tells you that that you're not doing enough it creates 
another thing inside of you that makes you mad. Man, maybe I'm not doing enough. And then, then that makes you more depressed. Um, so, no, I just appreciate you as a minister shedding light on that particular um, subject because I, I feel like it's definitely needed for our co community. Um, here's, here's, the, here's the other thing that I just want to add. You know, it's, sure. it's the new year. And a lot of us always have these New Year's resolutions. And now people are saying, well, I don't have one because we were all stuck stuck at home 2020. But generally, at the beginning of a year, people tend to want to lose weight. Now, let's just look at it this way. Mental health is, okay, are you going to say to the preacher, I need help with losing weight? Or are you going to get up off your, your behind and mm -hmm. work out? Because mm -hmm. you could take as many diet pills, you could starve yourself, you could do all this stuff. But at the end of the day, the only true way to, to lose weight and to keep it off is to work out and to change the way you eat. So we literally have to, we could pray all we want, but God is not going to come and, and, and move <laughs> your arms for you and, and burn the calories. You have to do that. You got to mm -hmm. do something. That's why mm -hmm. the, even the Bible says faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. I, I heard T.D. Jake say one time, Bishop T.D. Jake, excuse me. He, mm -hmm. he said, people think that God makes actual tables, like <laughs> a table. But no, he makes the wood. <laughs> So, but it's up to us to prepare the table. It's up to us right. to make the table. It's up, it's up to us to do the things with what he's given us, which is the tools. He's pretty much, he pretty much said that he's given us the tools that to actually go up and make the table. And it's the same thing here. Like he's given us the tools, the, the different workout plans, the different foods that we can eat, the different things, but it's up to us to go out there and make it. Um, and lose the weight, you know what I'm saying? Go out there and get the help and, and go out there and do that. So I definitely, um, you know, I agree with you with that. So when it comes to actually, the, the one thing I want to congratulate you guys on, or not so c congratulate you guys, but especially for, for you guys, you guys put a lot of people on. Um, I've seen you guys down through the years put a lot of people on. You guys aren't afraid to put artists on. You guys aren't afraid to show love to different artists or, or, or have different people on your platform. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so what I want to know with that is... Um, I, cause I believe that's needed, first of all, first and foremost, in our community, the whole crabs in the brown mentality really, really frustrates me. Um, but where did that come from? You know, because as an artist, too, you can say, well, why am I going to put on another, another artist? Like, I am an artist, and I need the views, I need the clicks, right. I need the revenue, <laughs> like, you got to wait, we got to wait to turn, you know what I'm saying? But you, right. well, from day one, since since you started your own uh, since 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 you've been rapping and you've been putting up projects, you simultaneously put other people on, you know. And yeah. I always thought I always thought that was dope. Um, so why is that so important to you? Well, I grew up in a in a home that was a given home, you know. Um, my mom was the kind of person who always, you know, when people were getting ready to leave, she's like, "Oh, take a bowl of this and take that." And so, you know, the environment I I, I grew up in was a given. Um, home, you know, giving food, giving money, you know, blessing people who were in need always. And mm. then I got married to my husband and it just his family's like through the roof, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to giving. So yeah. it was like I learned it growing up um, on a small scale. And then when I met my husband, they are like, I'll just use the word serial givers. Like his yeah, dad, yeah. his family, they give. And that's why they're so blessed. And 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 forget about um the spiritual side and being a Christian. People who give in general usually have a lot. If you look at people who tend to give, they're never in want. Because mm -hmm. God always, every time I've, I've opened up my platform to somebody, I found that another blessing is right around the corner. So that's been one of the things that I've, I've, um, practice put in place throughout my life just mm. giving if i could bless it just today i had a zoom call with a young lady in connecticut um who's also a writer and an artist but she's young and she has no clue how to do certain things and i'm like you know what let, let, let me just let me just show you how to do this thing um because i've known her for years and i've watched her struggle as an artist mm. and i said let me just take the time i took an hour out of my schedule to show her certain things and I plan to mentor her in the coming days to help her really get to that next level as an artist. But it's it just it's in my blood. Like I grew up this way. Mm. Mm. Shout out to the James family. Um, definitely, definitely givers. Um, 
and that's kind of how I, I grew up too. You know, just you got to show love to everybody. You got to show love to people. Um, and that's really also why I started this show because I just want to show love to people and give people their flowers while they're still here. You know, it's not even yeah. about me and, and what I do. You know, what, what I do is separate. This is just for the people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, man. So that's super dope. So let's talk about what's next for you. Like, what's next for Serious Voice? I, well, I gotta know. Um, you I know, want exclusive. We. <laughs> I try to get well, something out you of know, it. You know, listen, listen. Um, the show Success Stories with Serious Voice. We got a dope team behind it. It's it's a collaborative um, project. It's a talk show between with James Media and More Beats. We're working together mm -hmm. on this. As we've worked on the music together, now we're translating it onto TV. And um, we just spent an entire weekend shooting episodes in a, in Atlanta, and I had the opportunity to even sit down with a gentleman who worked on the Obama 2008 campaign um, mm -hmm. and political strategist. And just we were able to sit down, um, and I was able to interview a lot of prominent people in the Atlanta area. And I thank God for that mm -hmm. blessing and these doors that opened. But the show has really, it's taken off from being me, just me saying, you know, I want to utilize my giftings as a journalist on Instagram to now being a full-blown TV show. And there are people in Buffalo, New York, that are watching the show every week, twice a week, and soon to be Brooklyn, Manhattan, and across the country. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about upcoming music that I'm going to be releasing. Um, okay, it's funny yeah. because, listen, 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 you know, I love music. I love to release mm -hmm. music. Um, I got a song called um, Black is Beautiful. Mm. And it is along the vein of everything that I've done, but I'm just... I'm really just um, just showcasing the black woman, just telling her she's beautiful. And I want to encourage everybody to do that because we've been at a place where it wasn't popular to be a black woman. It wasn't popular to, to, to walk around and wear a hat that said black. Or, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's time that we honor the black woman because we've had to deal with so much. And I'm not saying that black men haven't had to deal with a lot. But right. in our society, we've always um, been dealt the shorter stick. Mm. We've always been dealt when it comes to the paycheck of the black woman. Mm. It's less than every other woman. You know, when it when it comes to us having a seat at the table. How many of us, what percentage of us are actually at the table? And so we're at a place where more and more black women have created our own platforms. We've said, listen, we're not waiting for, you know, the other person to put us on their platform. We're creating it for ourselves. And this is what Success Stories is all about, creating a platform for our people, for the black and brown community. And we're highlighting their successes. Um, but we're, we're about to remix the, 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 um, the theme song, Gotta Go. We're about to, Ooh. you know, really, um, what, do, what do I, uh, what's, what's the, the word that I can use? We're going to pimp it out. So Ooh. it'll be, it'll be a really, um, it'll have that trap sound to it, more of a mm -hmm. heavy trap sound. Um, and I want to get a couple of featured artists on there uh, from the A, uh, maybe a couple of people from New York, but we really want to do it up um, for season two. So yes, there is going to be a season two. And we're gonna we're gonna keep going and and when the opportunities come, you guys will get to hear it right here on Conversations of the Heart. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, and and the episode featuring you, we're getting ready to air that. What what we're looking to also do for the people that don't live in the various areas, we want to give them an opportunity to watch the show. And so right. what we are gonna do is create a YouTube channel by the end of this week. Where every week after the 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 um the shows are aired, we'll upload to YouTube, and you guys will get to see it then. So it'll be right. it'll be an easier way. So even if you're not if you're not in Brooklyn and you're not watching, you know, Brick at that time, you could just go to our YouTube page and watch it and comment um and leave your reactions. Man, so you're doing a lot out here in the game. You you, you are here doing. A, first of all, I'm looking forward to hearing this 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 whole new music. Um, I can't wait for that. Um. Damn. All right. Great. So first of all, tell people, first of all, where, where they can find you um, on social media. Okay. My Instagram is Serious Voice NY and uh, my website is SoSerious.net. 
Um, mm. On Facebook, you can find me at Serious Voice of New York or uh, Bridget Serious James, which is my main uh, profile page. On Twitter, it's Serious underscore Voice NY. Um, so if you if you just Google Serious Voice, you'll find the music, you know, the show, everything. You everything in mm -hmm. one. It's all on Google. Mm. So it's been a lot, you know, between 2020 and 2021. It's been yeah. a whole lot going on. A lot of <laughs> a lot of death, a lot of protests, a lot of a lot of, you know, sicknesses with the virus. I mean, you know, it's been it's been endless. So what have you been doing? to kind of maintain your own mental health? Like, what are some of your best practices that you could say, you know what, this is what I kind of do to keep myself centered. Um, I, I know it's probably prayer and stuff like that, but like, what else? Like, is there anything else that you do to kind of keep yourself, like, sane up, sane up here? You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. um, you Definitely, know, yeah. in addition to to praying and, and fasting mm -hmm. and meditating on the word of God, um, mm -hmm. people might don't, and I don't want people to take this the wrong way, I, I do go to the spa, and that's an important thing. I take spa days. I go and I get massages, um, and I think that that's important. That's important for your mental, for you to just release, because a lot of times our body gets so tense, especially with everything that's happened in the country. I The last time I went to the spa, which was, um, I believe it was a couple months ago, and um I went and it was just a great way to, to just release. So I get a lot of massages and this is kind of like a luxury thing. <laughs> no, no, but serious. I know, that's, that's I know real. people are like, that's I don't real. want people to think, oh, well, during COVID you're getting massages, you know. Um, but you have to. This is the thing. I've I've um cut back on spending on coffee. I bought an espresso machine. So the mm. money that I save with the espresso, I kind of use with the massages. And I take care of myself. Self-care is very, very important because in, you know, getting my nails done, getting my toes done, getting the massages, that helps me to just relax and mm. just release. So that's, mm. that's, those are the things that I like to do on a regular basis, at least once a month that help me to unwind so that I'm not this crazy person going off on people on social media, because it's easy when you watch the news or you see certain posts online for you to just post a reaction video, that's very yep. easy. And oftentimes I got to stop myself from doing that because I'm like, okay, no, you know, mm. I represent a brand and I can't, you know, I can't be this crazy person. that's always <sighs> reacting yep. to people. So yeah. um, going in and getting those monthly massages help. Uh, but if, if you can't afford that, I think that, um, you know, having your spouse or significant other doing it for you is helpful. Mm -hmm. Going for a walk. I, um, when there's no snow on the ground right now, we've got like 15 inches of snow outside. Um, but when More we don't coming. have this kind of inclement weather, <laughs> I'll wake up early and go for a two mile walk or a three mile walk. People wonder how I have all this energy. It's because I start my day early and I get going, you know, I take the walks. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to run a marathon. Um, I was a year ago, but now stuck in the house, I, I go for walks. You know, I take midday walks. I take breaks. You know, you Man. try to enjoy life. Man, you know, serious. The walks are cool. In 18 degree weather, it's not for me. Um, <laughs> um, yo, listen, it's not for me. Uh, I, I, I never tell you a lie. But let me tell you what I did do. Sunday, the first time in my life, one of my friends, they, 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 they at this, uh, you know, the beauty thing, you know, they, and mm -hmm. they do facials. Okay. One of my friends said, T, you got to try it. I was like, nah, I ain't doing it. Yeah, you know, for, for years I said I ain't doing it. <laughs> but what got me was they do the massage joint too. You know, while you got the face thing on, they got the massage thing going. And I, I, start, I said, you know, I could use a massage, you know, uh -huh. I said, so I, <laughs> So I went there, I went there, and serious, not serious, this thing changed my life. No, serious, this thing changed my whole life. I'm sitting back, I'm in the back of the chair. I got this thing on over. I, I, man, listen, I don't even care about that. All I know is they hit the massage, serious, I fell asleep. Oh, okay. I fell asleep, the massage thing was going. They told me that they was in there, you know, moisturizing the beards and all of that. I said, you moisturize my beard? They were like, yeah. I said, I was asleep. Serious, I was asleep. I was so relaxed. I was so relaxed. I couldn't believe it. Um, 
So when you so when you talk about the whole like the nails and all of that and getting your massages, right? Changing my life. I, I said I'm, I'm I'm gonna be back um, sooner rather than later. Um, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Sooner rather than later, serious. I'm gonna be back getting this whole facial massage joint. It's it changed my whole life from here on out. I'm on the self care. I might even go out there and get a pedicure. I ain't even gonna lie. Like I said, I might have to try something different all the time. Man, I, I said, man, it's something different. Um, so I'm on the same wave as you as that. My, uh, my brother said, the next time you in the ATL, um, look him up. You know, his okay. family. You know, my brother okay. said, look him up. His family. He out there, so you know, have a good time or whatever. Just chill with him or something like that. So definitely look him up. Um, uh, uh, man. So. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm going to just say this because we're almost running out of time. Um, I'm proud of you. Um, from Since since I've, I've known you, you've been a hard worker. That's number one. N but number two, you've been unselfish. You've put a lot of people on. You know what I'm saying? Um, down through the years. Lots of artists and lots of people. So I've, I definitely, pre you know, like I say, salute, you, salute to you for that. Um, you're always working. You're always grinding. You're always putting out music, doing projects. You're always busy. But also, you always put your family first. So with that, I just want to say, you know, I honor you. I, you know, I love you. I respect you. Uh, we need more like you. Um, I look forward to the different projects. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this uh, uh, project, too. Um, I really do appreciate, you know, you giving me a platform, too, uh, an open door to come through and have a conversation with you as well. Um, so I, I just wanted to say, man, thank you. Um, give you your flowers while you're still here. You know what I'm saying? Because you are a black woman and we honor that and we support that. And really everybody should, you know, and go out and support Sirius Voice. Um, she's doing amazing things. Please go stream her music, download her music, buy her music. Um, she has some dope merchandise too for the ladies and all of those things too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not well, you know, you 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 say it, so I I I, I gotta put I, I gotta mean, put the I gotta put the black woman out of one. <laughs> See, um, so you guys could could, could check it out there, mm -hmm. um, real quick. So for mm -hmm. if, for those watching, if if they'd like to to support by getting one of these, all they've got to do is just inbox me. Um, I had sure. actually had a recent giveaway where we gave away a young woman T-shirt, the anthem T-shirt that I'm currently wearing in the hat, and I had a couple of other businesses come on board and and just give away products for free. Um, so, you know, I'm always in the business of giving away cause you know, you can't like, like they said at, at my former church, you can't beat God given, you know, if you give, mm -hmm. God always blesses you in return. So that's, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I try to practice all the time. No matter how hard you try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You already know. Listen, uh, listen. I'm looking forward to having you back on, you know, when you drop the project and, th and different things like that. And we're going to do it and do this again because um, I think it's so dope that people get get to see you um, and hear what you got going on because you have some amazing things going on. So I appreciate you for coming on Conversation of the Heart, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, cool. So we'll talk soon. Okay, take care. All right. Bye-bye. Later. All right. That's a wrap. Um, Conversation of the Heart, episode four, season two. We'll be back on Thursday. Um, yeah, with my boy, writing his wrongs. Whoo, that's that's gonna be a loaded one. Um, but thank y'all, appreciate y'all for y'all support. Um, it's been dope. All right, y'all. So listen, peace. It's your boy Tito, man. I am out of here. I will see y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>